Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, welcome, welcome. Can you hear me okay? Everyone can hear me at the back? Wonderful, wonderful. My name is Samith Pitch. It's my absolute privilege to be in front of you good looking guys on a Friday morning. I'm sure you can be, I'm sure you have lots of stuff to do. I know I have lots of stuff to do. Um, but you're taking time out of your business to actually work on your business instead of in your business. And I think that is one of the most valuable time. Just want to give thanks to uh, Bob and Alan for giving me the opportunity to have a chat to you uh, today. It's, a, it's literally a dream to come true to speak in front of Bob. I've seen all the other speakers. I'm like, how do I match those guys? So there's lots of big shoes to fill, but hopefully we can have some fun um, over the next hour that I'm going to be talking. You will notice that I talk fast. That's mainly because um, I've been hanging around Sandra for too long. So I, it, it kind of rubs off on me. And because I've actually got a lot of stuff to go through. This is usually, I spend a weekend talking just about this topic, and I'm going to try and pack it into uh, an hour or so with you guys. Not that I want, uh, I'm trying, I won't try to take anything out, but I won't be able to go for the nitty gritty for you today. Today, all I really want to do is I just want to spark your minds. If I can spark your minds and help you think about your business and how it tracks leads, generates inquiries and gets more customers and sales, that would be, I believe my job would done. And then after that, you'll probably have some more questions and you can find those answers online or with the people around here. So I'm going to give you some foundational information that most people in business never ever get. And if you have this stuff, it will literally change the way you do your business. And it started for me 10 years ago and um, it hasn't changed ever since. So uh, I'm just going to get started. And I wish my clicker worked, but it doesn't. So who is Samba Pitch? That's me there, but obviously I'm right in front of you. So, uh, my name is Samif. I've been in business for the past 10 years. Uh, pre I actually started as a high school teacher, teaching kids high school um, art, science, and math. Weird combination. And um, there's nothing like a group of people who don't want to be there and you trying to stuff information down. Hopefully your minds are slightly more open than theirs. But I still consider myself primarily an educator. That's what I love most. So being in front of you guys, teaching you some stuff, that's what lights me up. And so about, um, about, yeah, I was a high school teacher for 10 years, and then about 10 years ago, I realized there had to be more to life, right? Because I was going to work every single day, going to the uh, staff room, and there were a whole bunch of what I call, what we call dinosaurs. They were literally there just to just kind of ret go to retirement and become part of the furniture. And I said, if I ever, be, if I ever felt like that way, I'm out of here. And one day, I, one day for a long period of time, I, I did. And I started to, I went on a journey to go, what else, is out, what, what else is out there in terms of, you know, opportunities? So one late night around 11 o'clock at night after binging on some TV, I, I typed in immortal words, make money online, okay? I don't know if you've ever typed those words out. It's a dangerous thing to type in at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> And so sooner, uh, sooner or later, I was inundated with emails from every corner of the world telling me everything from I can make $10,000 in the next 30 minutes to growing my penis larger, which is impossible, but it's fine. Um, so all these crazy things, I essentially went down this rabbit hole. And for the next three years, I was out in the wilderness buying all types of crazy, shiny objects. In fact, if if there was something that was guaranteed for me to lose my money, I made sure my name was on it because I wanted to find out everything there was. So I went through all this stuff, uh, three years on, had not made one cent, spent tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt, and uh, finally decided I need to get serious. So seven years ago, I got myself a coach, I got myself someone who actually understood business, and we sat down and said, what do you want to do? And then I, I went on this journey of learning the real stuff to make it online. And within about, I don't know, three, three months, I made my first $25 online. And that, to me, is the biggest achievement I've ever made. Not the $100,000 that came, you know, like a year later, but that first $25 coming, pinging, and seeing that first sale. I was like, oh my God, this is real. So... Uh, Three months later, I made my first 10K, in the first year, 6K, and we've, um, in the last couple of years, we've, we've sold over a million dollars worth of stuff online, 
and I've been fortunate enough to be able to speak in front of small groups and large groups of a thousand or so, and we've been able to manage uh, ad spends in, in excess of a million dollars every single year. So we're doing something right in terms of people. So um, really, my job here is to give you the tips, tools, and strategies to allow you to, to think about your business in a different way. So let's move on to that. I don't even know if I'm going to use most of this, depending on how much time we got. We started at 8.25. Please keep me on track. In the next 60 minutes, I'm going to grab you by the face and shake it lots in a really fun way. You're going to learn the best traffic sources and marketing trends in 2019. You're going to learn where the buyers are and to understand the buyer's new online journey. And I'm going to give you the methods to dominate your market in 2019. Okay, this is going to actually be an interactive session. Ideally, most of the time you're doing the talking, not me. So my question to you is, where right now is the best place to market your business? Give me some answers. Yes. For me, it's been Facebook. Facebook, yes. And Google. Google, yes. Where, uh, where else? Give me, give me something more. Instagram. Instagram, yeah. One more. LinkedIn, great, great. So before I tell you the answer to that question, because it's a really, it's, the, it's literally the first thing people will say, okay, where do, we, where do we go to market to people? That's usually the first question. However, let me just tell you right now, it's, it's the wrong question, okay? The right question is this. Okay, actually, no, before I ask you what the right question is. Okay, so imagine for a moment, I'm your marketing director. You came up to me and said, Sam, I've just hired you. I'm paying you a lot of money. Tell me, I've got $10,000 in cash or you know, 5,000, whatever your marketing budget is. I've got this nice marketing budget. It's a juicy marketing budget. Do whatever you want. What should I do with this money? Okay, where should I put it? Where should I put it today? Now, I came up to you. I did my, put my thinking cap on, came back to you a couple of days later and said, I know exactly where you should be putting your money on. And this is what I told you. You should be putting your money onto this. Does anyone actually know what this is? Okay. Good old fax machine. Fax machine. You'll be surprised. Depending on the demographics, from like, what, is that a printer? What is it? This, this scared the heck out of me when I first saw it. It still kind of does. But if I told you to, that I want you to put your whole 10K budget in a fax machine, you'd do this. You probably think I lost my marbles, right? You probably think, what are you on about? But the, 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 so the question is, you asked me where should I put my money, and I answered the fax machine, which is obviously the wrong answer. It's a crazy answer. But if you thought of it in a different way, which is not where, but when should I put my money into a 10K, and, I, and this, we were back in 1970, 1980, 1985, the answer would have been the fax machine. Back in 1980, that was the place to be. It worked then. Why did it work? Well, everyone had a fax machine. Every business had to have one. Everybody knew how to use it. And it was the main mode of apparatus to you know, communicate. So back in 80, 1985, it would have been the right answer. However, in 2019, it's the wrong answer. So the, uh, the question you shouldn't be asking is, where should I put my money? The question is, when? Okay, and actually, there's a couple more uh, uh, questions that you should be asking. Not from where. Where is not as important as who, what, and when. Who, what, and when. That's what I focus on. I, where, where is like, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> where it literally is everywhere at the moment. But the bigger question, the more important question is who, what, and when. By the way, you're more than welcome to write down every little golden nugget that you get today if that helps you learn. But I prefer you actually to be quite present here and just focus on me because I, I you know, didn't have enough attention when I was younger and I needed that now. Uh, so would you like to have the slides at the end of this presentation? Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. So I'll just give you the slides at the end of this presentation. You can go over it at your own pace then. I really just want you to get what I'm getting and then if something 
knocks you out of the park, write it down. Okay, so let me reiterate. Where is not as important as who, what, and when. And if you think like that first, you're on the right track. I'm going to go back. So the million dollar question is, if you wouldn't depend on an outdated marketing strategy to connect with consumers, why on earth would you trust an outdated marketing funnel to drive your marketing strategy? So everyone's thinking, okay, what does that mean? It's like, if I wouldn't use a fax machine now, why would I use a marketing funnel that for most businesses is still based in 1980s, 1990s? Okay? I want to show you what a marketing funnel looks like today and what works today. Is that okay? Mm. Awesome, awesome. So really, it's all about times of a changing. Consumer behavior has changed. What has, give me some, give me three main shifts or three big shifts today in consumers that have changed in the last 10 years. Yes. They don't wait in line. They don't wait in line. I hate waiting in line. Yes. iPhone. iPhone. So they're, mo they're on mobile. They're on their phones now. Yes. One more. Looking for immediate results. It, immediate results. Yeah. Um, your, your potential customer doesn't care that you actually shouldn't be working 24 hours a day. They don't care that you should actually have a life. If it's 11 o'clock at night and they want to know that they want something now, they want someone to actually answer them right now and they want the answer and they want to buy it right now because that's what they feel like right now. They don't understand that yet they should actually, there's something called business hours, but in a business hours is out of the window, okay? Uh, but, that, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that you have to be the person attending to them. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, here's what I believe. There's a couple of things. Your mission as a business is to truly and faithfully serve the people that care with generosity and to deliver life-changing, soul-enhancing solutions to their problems. I know that sounds a bit wishy-washy, right? But really, I, I believe this deep in our core that as businesses, we're actually here to serve, we're here to solve problems, and we get paid a really, you know, a decent wage or, or a decent income if we choose to do that really, really well. Now, the, the highlight that I want to put in is the people that care. This is a concept I really want you to get. Because when I go to every new business, their first thing is, when, it, when we say who, I say, who's your target market? And they'll go, everybody. Everybody wants this. It's the best thing. It's, you know, everybody needs health, or everybody needs tiles, or everybody needs, you know, taxes. They think it's everybody. But to do well in this business, in this day and age, you don't have to deal with everybody. We're, we're not the Coke, we're not Coke, we're not Apple, we're not Samsung, we don't need everybody. We actually just need anywhere from, say, 1,000, maybe 10,000 max, maybe even as small as uh, between 100 to 500 people that really, really care about our business, that actually really, really care about the things that we care about, that are passionate about this little thing. For some of you, Having 100 to 500 people is all you need in your business. For some of you, you might need 1,000. For some of you, 10,000 is plenty. You probably couldn't handle any more than that. So instead of thinking about marketing to everybody, in today's day and age, you actually just need to find the people that care. And I'm going to show you how you, how you find it. And then obviously serve them, empower them, change their lives. Because business, when it's done right, is life-changing. If you think about when you deal with a person that's struggling with their tax and they're just pulling their hair out and then you come in and give a bookkeeping um, solution or you give them something to do their bath or you take away that tax, they're like, oh my God, I can actually breathe now. You know, if, if, they, if their house is falling down and you go and renovate it for them, they feel like a totally different person. So all these things that we do in business is we're actually in the life-changing business. We're in this life-enhancing business. So I've already said, your job is actually not to sell to the masses. Your job is to appear, have that perception to always be there before the people that care need you. Your job is to be there or appear to be there before the people need you. And if, when you get that, your life will change. And so one way we're going to start doing that is by creating a funnel and understanding your potential customer's buying journey. That's how we're going to do it today. So here we, here we go. 
So I'm saying lots of words that may not mean a lot to a lot of people. So, give me um, what is a funnel? Give me a, what your definition of a funnel would be. What is a funnel? Yep. Good, good. Any other definitions or anything that we can add on to that wonderful definition of a funnel? Directing people to one place. Yeah, uh, the same thing as what she said, just you know, something with a, maybe a big, big at one end, small at the other, and it concentrates that into uh, like focusing in one place. Yeah, yeah. So, it's big at one end, it's small at the other. In so facto, we've got a funnel, right? So, what I like to think of a funnel is essentially it's a framework. It's a loose framework to help define, understand, and follow the different stages a buyer passes through to become a customer. Go from a stranger, essentially a stranger to a customer. And the three, four, five, 10, 20, 100 steps that it takes for them to do that to take strangers and turn them into raving customers. That's the central process, right? And how we do that. Some things I want you to really understand. Marketing funnels are always evolving. They are creative and they're proactive. By definition, having a marketing funnel means you've actually fought ahead. You actually planned it, you've actually created it. Whereas most businesses, unfortunately, are kind of, they're, they're very fixed. They believe, I have products to sell, I have this, this, and this, and I need to ship it out to the marketplace, right? And they're usually reactive. A person comes in and goes, okay, what do you need? I'll give you a custom solution. Or what do you, um, you know, how can I help you make sure that you're tailored? But, and the person goes, I actually need this and this and this, and they react, okay? So most businesses are, so look, here's all my products and which one would you like? And then react to it. Whereas by definition, a marketing funnel is proactive. We think ahead of time where the people are, who the people are, when they're coming in, and we tailor a specific solution for them. So moving from what can I promote? What is this month special? Which is okay, it works. It fills the cash register to how can I be there when they need me? And how can I provide the most value in advance? How can I provide the most value in advance? Because I learned really early on that the people who provide the most value win the game in business. The people who educate the market lead the market. So you, you write, that, write that one down, because it's not even written down, it should be. The people that educate the market lead the market. Because we're kind of hardwired to follow educators, to follow a person who leads us down a wonderful rabbit hole of awesomeness. Like, you know, we're kind of wired, as you can see right here, you're right in front of me, all eyes on me as an educator, okay? And by, by definition, we, we kind of raise educators. So imagine if you were the educator in your marketplace, and how can you provide them value in advance. Okay. Let's look at what an old marketing funnel looks like. This, this, this still works, guys. Like, you can still understand it from this point of view. Old marketing funnel, we use ADA, awareness, interest, desire, actions, getting a whole lot of people, and again, at the end, having a few people, right? That's the old marketing funnel. Marketing potential, suspects, prospects, customers. This is what the new, the modern online buyer's journey looks like. It actually starts, it's literally only four phases, but the four phases can be looped into infinity, right? We start with awareness. Someone is aware they have a problem. Someone is aware that there's something happening in their life, they need to make a change. Then they start to move to consideration, where they're starting to think about what should I do? How do I do it? 
And then they start going into what we call a research and discovery loop, where they actually start their research, and then they discover stuff, and then they do more research, and they discover, look at, I always think about how my wife works. She goes, oh, we should go to Bali. Okay, fine, we're going to Bali. Then she'll go, okay, who, who's the best person to uh, you know, get us cheap flights? So she'll start researching, and she discovers some stuff. And then while she's discovering, she finds out there's this fantastic little restaurant up in the mountain somewhere. So she's researching and discovered. Then she watches some videos about this fantastic little restaurant in the mountains. And then finally, when she's had enough, after four or five days, she's driving me crazy. Uh, she'll go, okay, we, we have to go to there. She makes a purchase for us. Or she goes to the travel agent and makes a purchase. And then we go there, have an amazing time, take lots of photos, tag ourselves, tell everybody in the world about it, and we continue. What I really want you to get from that picture is this. Just like the fax machine, the, the fax machine prints st stuff out in 2D, whereas we don't operate in 2D, obviously. What we operate in is more like this. We operate in 3D. Okay? Your, your person is a 3D person, this, this only talks about length and height, but this talks about where they are in their journey, and then the time, and then also what they're looking for. And sometimes, they, in this cyclone, they'll go here, and they'll just stay here for a while, and they'll never get off it. Sometimes they'll do this whole beautiful process, and they'll, they'll be stuck there, and then they'll have to go back to the top. But once they're down here, what will often happen is they'll go back to the top and then they'll do a very tight little circle. So they'll no longer have to go through this whole process once they do business with you. Say someone you know, does all this whole process to do a kitchen remodeling. They do their research, they discover things, they go on Instagram, they go on um, Google, they go to different websites, they finally purchase the wonderful tiles. Then you have the loyalty loop, which is that experience that you're an amazing person, they give their reviews. Next time they want to purchase tiles again, are they going to go through that whole process? No, they're just going to go through a tighter version of that process. In fact, they might just go straight to um, quick consideration and purchase and done. Okay. So I really want you to take your mind from a 2D perspective to a 3D perspective. Okay, so four main buyers area, awareness, consideration, which has that research discovery area, the purchase, and the loyalty loop. So we're gonna just do, uh, I'll have to figure out how I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna tell you to call out. Okay, just remember these, these four ones. Awareness has an A, then consideration, C, Loyalty loop has an L, and purchase has a P. Just try to remember those for me, okay? No. Okay, so I want you to meet Karen. She's awesome, right? But her fridge is on the way out. She needs her fridge repaired. Let's take her on a buyer's journey. By the way, if I'm not making any sense, if you need me to clarify something, please stop me, because I will just keep ranting on until my time is allotted and John pulls me out by a cane, okay? So I want you to get as much as you can. This is for your business, not my business. So let's talk about it. We'll start here. Karen? Okay. One day, Karen's going to the fridge and she notices that there's water leaking out of her fridge. The, the food has slightly gone off. And um, when that happens, where is she at in terms of, she notices that awareness. awareness. Wonderful. Just call out. Just call out. Okay. So she, she goes, oh, crap. Mike, the fridge is out. What do we do? And he's like, I'm too busy. I've got to work on my business. Okay, fine. Um, what, so where she goes to is she goes to Google, right? Because 75% of people do their first type of action on Google and she starts looking for um, um, fridge repairs. Where is she at in the buyer's journey now? Research. C. Consideration. Consideration. 
she's now in consideration. She goes to Google. Okay? After she goes to Google, she, she looks at a few of them. She's, she goes to a couple of websites. So the website. So let's say she's still at C. Then she has to go on Facebook because she's got to find out what her Aunt Betty is doing, right? And she, then she goes into her local community and she asks, does anyone know a fridge guy, right? So where is she now? Research. Still, she's still at, she's still at, she, uh, she's now at R, she's, you know, CR, right? Okay, so she goes, who, does anyone know of a fridge guy? And her friends will go, oh, you, you got to use this guy, this guy, I highly recommend this guy. So then she goes and she goes to three different websites. She goes to Fridge Guy 1, Fridge Guy 2, Fridge Guy 3. And so now she's doing her research, right? Fridge Guy 1 goes to a one page website. It says, I'm, the, you know, I'm your fridge guy. Call my number here. Uh, and there's a box that says quote. She goes, What do you think she'll do? Uh, there's, not there's not enough information. She goes, Ooh. He didn't take enough time on that one. The next guy, so it stops there. It just, ba boom, um, goes to the next guy. Next guy, it, it literally just is a number. She calls a number. Um, person doesn't pick up, but tells her to, you know, leave a, leave a, uh, leave a message. She, does she leave a message? No. No. It's not instant. Ba boom. Okay. She goes to the third guy. Basic website, but on the website it actually has. Um, it has some information about how to fix a web, how to fix the, you know, the leaks, some, some cheap ways, and then it has some links to where they can get the parts. And then finally, there's a, um, there might be a free, a free quote. What does she do? Yep, she, she puts it in, but she goes there. Okay, so now she's, she's in discovery. Next couple of days, ideally, at right, within about an hour, she gets a call from this guy, and he talks about all his all, all the stuff he's been you know, been doing business for 25 years, and when does she need to have the, the stuff fixed? So she goes, okay, I will yeah, come come in tomorrow. Fantastic. So now she's in the research phase. The guy comes, just says it's going to be this and this, but I can do it for this and this. Does she purchase then and there? Yeah, she does. She, she's, she's really quite happy. Yeah, yeah, because the food's going to go off. The, the food's going to go off. There's, there's a party on Saturday, and she needs it done now. Okay? She purchases it. And then what she does, he comes in. He does a wonderful job. The, the fridge is just humming like it's never hummed before. Right? The food's crisp and cold. Um, the, it looks really new in the seal. And he, um, there were some, some stains at the bottom, and it's all clean. The kitchen actually looks better than when she does it. Right? So what does she do now? She's really happy. Facebook and tells everybody how happy she is. She tells people on Facebook, oh my God, you should look at this guy. He is, this is supposed to be a foghorn or something. You know, oh my God, he's amazing. Like, thumbs up. I did it the wrong way. Anyway, thumbs up. And tells people, yay, this is great. Okay? So, She's now, where's she at? She's at Loyalty Loop. Loyalty Loop, okay? Okay. So then she, works, she lives her life. She's doing her life stuff. And then one day, her friend calls up and goes, oh, I don't know what's happened by fridge. I think it's on the blink, right? Uh, friend. And so what does she do? Oh, I know a fridge guy. I know a fridge guy. Loyalty Loop, okay? And then what does her friend do? Rings, makes a call, and they're amazing. You know, they're, they're going to launch it. That's an example, rather than showing this funnel, right? An example of how the, the new online journey, okay? So, if this guy was thinking ahead, which I think he did, where would he be? Where would he need to be? She first is on Google, does a call. He needs, he needs to make sure his website's good landing place good. Exactly. He needs to make sure his website is good. He should ideally be here as well, just as the first type of branding call. Just so, 
if they put fridge, they can just see it. They don't need to click on the ad, they just need to see him around. He needs to have a presence on Facebook so that people can re recommend him. And then if he has done his work, he might have a follow-up CRM here. Yes, Google reviews, G plus reviews. Okay, so that's him thinking ahead. He has to have content. He has to have great content that really doesn't say, "Look, I'm a fridge guy. Give me a call. Put in the form, and that's all there is. There's nothing there." He needs to go. Okay, what is the problem that this person having? If they don't need, how can I help them so they actually don't need me? Because if give them value for nothing, so they can trust you. You should be up here, Sandra, okay? Okay, Sandra knows the deal. That is one customer loop. How are we going for time? Actually, okay. Unless it's already been an hour, and then it's really bad. Okay. Okay, here we go again. Meet Marcos. He's a Dockers fan, which is why he needs his kitchen remodeled because his wife is unhappy. Um, because she told him, because, you're, I'm, because we're in, I'm in the Eagles and you're Dockers, we need to have a new kitchen. Happy wife, happy life. That's the most important thing, right? Let's start. What does, what does Marcos do? So Marcus goes, fine, happy wife, happy life. Where does he start? He'll probably start on Google. Okay, he knows uh, where we are on the buyer's journey. He has a problem, he's aware he has a problem, okay? So he's on Google, and he will go to, he goes to the first one here. Uh, he literally only fix on the, on the first one that looks good, he goes to a website. Now, that website has a great video about um, top trends, top trends um, in kitchen has a video. Okay, where, where is he in when he looks at that video? He's yeah, he's in consideration and he's also in discovery, he's discovering. But then he just, he leaves, he leaves right here. Along the way, he goes to a, a whole bunch of other, other websites. Like he goes to like Kitchen Remodelers Are Us, he goes to Wikipedia, he goes to Facebook, and he keeps noticing this this uh, brand pop up in little videos, in, in, in little in other websites. Where is he at now? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So he's both aware and he's really now in the discovery and he's now considering. But because he's a man, he goes, you know what, I can do it myself, right? It can't be that hard. <laughs> so he goes, to, he goes to YouTube because he wants to go, he wants to go, um, you know, and he types in how to do my own kitchen remodeling. Can't be that hard, bloody hell. And when he's on YouTube, he then watches four and a half hours of YouTube videos. In that time, he sees little ads for this, for this kitchen remodeling guy that goes, let me give you my, uh, the top, top 10 plans of how to easily create your kitchen remodeling, right? And also, they just happen to have little videos about other kitchen remodeling. So what he does is then he then creates, in total he spends eight hours on their site. What is he doing now? Research. Yeah, he's, he's still really in the research discovery phase. Yeah. But, Underneath it all, they are priming him to be in the loyalty loop because they're showing him not just how to do a kitchen, but they're showing him before and after of kitchens. They're showing him testimonials of happy people. They're showing him um, the, the back, uh, their, 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 their process with their happy team and how they do things. And then finally, finally, he goes, okay, I'm going to give him a call. And then they go to a purchase. And then what happens? They have an amazing experience, loyalty loop. And we know what happens after that. They go on Facebook, they tell everybody, they leave a review, they tell everybody, and they, get, they be, one day become one of these testimonial people. So when another 
Al Alan or whatever his name was comes by, they're, they're stuck in that buyer's journey as well. Any questions about the new online buyer's journey? Yeah, go ahead. It should, yeah, good, <laughs> good luck. I didn't have time to write it down. <laughs> Actually, what I'll do is I'll take a photo of that and I'll put it onto the slides. If I knew where I put my phone. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be smart. Okay. Okay, now, now because we're also in 2019, I have to do the obligatory selfie where I pretend I'm having lots of fun and you guys pretend that you're really enjoying me as well. Hey. Everybody say hi. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Okay, because nothing happens unless you take a photo and it's posted on Facebook. Yeah. Nothing actually happens in life. Mm. Okay, so that was the overview. Let's in the remaining half an hour, get into some nitty gritty about what that looks like. Okay, Marcus, his name is Marcus. I'm actually gonna move forward. Okay, this is the question I want you to ask. Are you tofu, bofu, mofu, or just F you? Okay. So, you probably think this question is about you. But it's not. This question is for your customer. This question is about you knowing where the customer is at any point in time and having a specific response and strategy for that person at that point in time. Okay, remember, it's not about where yet. I'm going to give you the where. It's more about when. Tofu, mofu, and bofu. They stand for top of funnel. Very, very much at the top, middle of funnel. And then bottom of funnel. No, bottom of funnel. Of funnel, right? And then bottom is money. Power of money. Are you tofu, mofu, or bofu? So just when I say that acronym, you kind of know what, what I'm talking about, okay? Okay, getting to some weeds now. So we divided this funnel, knowing what we just discussed, and yes, you obviously have a, you know, a copy of this, into tofu, mofu, and bofu. And there are specific strategies that work better at specific times. So what I find great for tofu which is the top of funnel, is that personally what I, what I do is I use three things. Facebook ads for social media, Google ads for PPC, and then YouTube for, for discovery and content. PPC? PPC, pay per click, Google yeah, ads. Correct. It used to be called Google AdWords, now it's, it's, no, they just call it Google Ads, which I actually kind of like, but I still say Google AdWords. Facebook Ads, Google Ads, and YouTube. If I had to just decide where I need to put my money, it would be those three places. But it's actually in a specific way. So with Facebook Ads, I would do video. Video, 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 video. And with Google Ads, I would do broad, basic. And then with uh, YouTube, obviously, I would do just how-to videos. Because these people are just at the awareness stage. They're at the consideration stage, right? Remember where, we, where people are doing things? And today, few Facebook ads are disgustingly cheap. Like really, really underpriced. And they deliver so much value, especially video ads, right? 
because you can get one view um, for half a cent, a tenth of a cent. If you wanted to reach 10,000 people, it'd cost you maybe $20, $30, right? And if you want to reach 10,000 people on TV, what would that cost you? Yeah, you don't, don't even want to think about it. So um, that, what that allows you to do is only one main thing we want to do with this. We want to create what is classed as an audience, a group of people who are here. Okay, tofu. Um, broad basic, what I'm talking about is just the general keywords that people would look, be looking for. If you're in um, uh, home repairs, it would like be like home repairs, Perth, right? Um, if you're in uh, sales, it might be sales training. And then finally YouTube, create 10 to 20 five minute videos on how to. and you will be done. You create these guys once, and you will be, you'll be set. You'll be set for life. An example, I've got my wife, she runs a floristry school, to do how-to videos about how to, very basic ones, like how to do a wrist corsage, right? She did that video um, about a year ago, and it now has something close to like 120,000 views. And she did that video once, and it's just organically kind of ranking. And every single day, she gets a comment from someone that says, I loved your videos. Because when they watch one video, what do they do? They watch multiple videos. They start that awareness cycle, right? So that's what we're doing with there. Uh, tofu. Okay, just a quick question. Yes. On, on Facebook ads? Yeah. So are these like selfie type videos? Or are these professional type videos? Or how, how long should they be, that kind of? Good questions. I, this, this day and age, people want real. They don't want you to be like this fancy brand. They just want to know that you're a real person, especially if you're a local business. So go with the selfie video. Um, my quick tip is make sure that the video is horizontal like this because it takes up the entire screen. If you do this, you get these black bars or these weird shaded bars on the side. Okay. Every phone should come with those instructions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take note. And you know, always landscape videos. Always landscape videos, always. <laughs> and the only reason why I know is because if you start here, you know, if you start here, right, and you turn halfway, because I think it's actually better here, you're literally walk, talking to them on the side. And I know because I've done it myself early on. I've done at least three videos like that now for some reason. Um, but people think it's hilarious. So video ads, may, and the video should go for two minutes. Just two minutes, two minute video ads. And it will cost you two cents to get a view. One cent, two cents. It is amazing. Okay, let's go to, as soon as we got them somewhere, as soon as we got them online, we need to take them somewhere. So my question to you is, where should we take them? Where should we take them? Web landing page. La yeah. Landing page. Landing page. So about two, three years ago, I would have said landing page. And it's still, I'd say for most of the things, once, they're, once they see an ad, most of the time, you should take them to a landing page. 70, yeah, at least 70% of the time. What's the difference between a website and a landing page? A website is your website. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And it has all those beautiful buttons and everything. It's a smorgasbord of delights as people come there and see what you can have to offer. However, that smorgasbord of delights confuses people. Um, they click on everything and then they go away, okay? Whereas, whereas uh, and what will usually happen is a website will convert at around 1%. Whereas a landing page, one problem, one solution, I can help you, give you value in advance, on average, anywhere from 30 to 50% of people will go through a landing page. Okay, and, and that still works, that still works today. The only thing I'm gonna to add to that right now is if you're on Facebook, wherever people are, wherever people are, that is where you should connect with them. So if people on Facebook, nowadays, I'm not really taking a lot of people to a landing page anymore, unless I'm trying to test conversions. I'm taking them to Messenger, or I'm taking them to a Messenger bot, 
uh, you know, an online um, a tool that automates my uh, connections with me. So if they're on YouTube, I will then message them on YouTube. If they're on uh, Instagram, I'll message them. So I'll make that first connection there, and then maybe on a second or third connection, I'll take them to a landing page. Okay? So I don't immediately take them to a landing page straight off. I'm probably going to do some pre-qualification, which is what we did with Bob members. Before they went to the landing page, we pre-qualified them, made sure they were the right type of people, which meant that by the time they came to the landing page, they were highly engaged, highly, you know, they understood what Bob was all about, and they got value out of it. Any questions about middle of funnel? Well, with the landing page, you're just really having just one page with information Yep. Yeah, you get, are you getting their details and sending them like a PDF or like that? Yes. So you're not, as you say, it's just one, one spot rather than going to the web where you've got multiple. Yes. So you take them to one website. There's no navigation bars. There's no menu about us, anything. It's literally just one spot. And it will literally be just their main key point. And you're going to give them something that they can consume right then and there. It might be a five minute video that you shoot on your phone. It might be a PDF, it might be a checklist. A person who's looking for um, rental stuff might go, what are, the, what are the tools I need to actually do my own rental? If you had a checklist, you need this, this, and this, that is highly valuable. Yes. So, so the landing page can be one of the pages of your website. Yes, so it can. Yes. Because that made it sound like you had to create a separate page. Mm -hmm. Because you, you imagine, I know some people's websites are quite basic, yeah. And then they have landing pages which are separate again. So I know when we used to advertise with census and the other pages, they used to drive to created landing pages. But with a website for our business, which is obviously intense and there's lots of galleries and we want to know how to's and frequently asked questions and stuff, you would imagine you've got the website to be juiced up as possible. So we would want that PDF on stuff in the website anywhere. Yes. Yeah, that is correct. So they're looking for kitchen, driving to the kitchen page as yes. the bathroom page. Yes. So the, the, what I'm trying to get at, normal website has this slider header, people are happy, right there. Usually has three to four buttons. We do tiles, kitchens, uh, bathrooms, toilets, yeah? And then we have all this information here and we have our stuff here. So what will, ha what will happen is, imagine you did Google ads and you said, Ti I want to rank for tile keywords, um, bathroom keywords, etc., and you send everybody here, just everybody. And in general, you'd, you'd probably get around a 1% to 3% uh, conversion. 1% to 3% of them become inquiries. So we put, say, 100, uh, 100 people here, maybe 1% to 3% of them would equal inquiry. However, what if the person who was only looking for tiles went to a page where it says tiles, top 20 brands, and here's our catalog, catalog, and, he, and you know, input right there. 100 people go there, you're going to get at least, at a very basic amount, 20 to 30% opt-in. Now you have 30 people you can sell to, rather than one that goes to that. Now you have 30 inquiries, and these inquiries are only about tiles. You know exactly what they want, because you're going to survey them afterwards. That's the difference between website only and versus a landing page that can be on the website. It's just a place that you're going to put them. It's about the focus of the page, yes? Can you show us what you need? I just want to see what, like, visually, what it looks like with the website. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put that in my website. I'm going to do that at the end. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm going to make sure that I attend to that. Okay, website. Um, and then the last one is when they've got their, put their details in, how, they're, they're at the bottom of the funnel. How are you going to follow up with them? And ideally, how are you going to do that in a way that doesn't mean that you're up at 11 o'clock at night? How do you do that in a way that allows, I, I believe, in high touch, high tech? So it allows you to help
help them understand your brand, understand your business, understand the values that you bring, understand uh, why they should be doing business with you. And it's coming out to them every single day or every second day about your brand. Because how many times, how many touch points do you think it takes before someone is willing to do business with you on average? Yep. The, it used to be two to, two to three because people just trusted businesses. The business said, I can do this. You went, great. Now, on average, it's seven to 12 touch points. Seven to 12. They might see you on Google. Then they'll see you on Facebook. They might see the ad. Then they go and see a couple of emails. And then finally, they'll go, okay, great. Now, some of these people want to do business straight away. But most people are slow to react, take their time, want to consider stuff. So that's what you have to cater for. You can't cater for the one, you know, 3% that want it now, which is what most businesses try to do. You've got to cater for the 45% that want it maybe later. Maybe later. And then there's the 53% that never want it. They, it doesn't happen. They, they don't want anything. They, they just want to waste your time. Yes. I just had a question because you know we talked earlier about you know people wanting instant yeah. response. Yeah. Because it, so basically what you're trying to I'm just trying to interpret um, online. So these maybe layers, when they do become fall into that three percent, then they are gonna want, then they are gonna want it now. So you best be ready. To, so you know what I mean? It's like so when when they find yeah. so yeah. walk in the morning whatever all of a sudden become. Okay, now I've decided they're going to go, I better be getting a response straight away. That is correct. That. Yeah. that is kind of what I'm saying. I'm saying when people want you now, be available now. But most people will not want you now, actually. Because most, most businesses want to sell to people now. I'm talking about how do you follow up with them so that maybe later is now become a now. That's the pr most businesses don't do that. They don't follow up with their business and the, the fortune is in the follow-up. You probably heard it. If, you could, if I could repeat anything 200 times, the fortune is in the follow-up. And if you know that there's a particular follow-up sequence that you need to use, make sure that that sequence is automated via email. Just make sure that is now a part of what you do. That everybody, before they even talk to you, before you talk to anybody, already likes, knows and trusts you. They already know what you're about. Yes. So yes, that, that could absolutely happen on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll show you a brief example of what that would look like. So a person comes through a Facebook ad, right? A Facebook ad, and it's a video. They then go to a landing page where they put in their details to get a free ebook, et cetera. What we, what we do is we put little bits of code called a pixel on it. It's called a Facebook pixel. We put a little code, and it tells us that this person's been at the page. Now, when they put in their details, what will happen is on their news feed, we will then give them new videos. This is three days afterwards. This is five days, just more videos. Five days, seven days. So in their news feed, every two days, they get new videos coming up, but only because they put in their details here. First video might be, hey, look at our back office. Uh, next video might be, here's some testimonial videos. The final video is, hey, we've got a closing down, we've got a special on this one thing, buy now. And so now you've had a couple of touch points, touch point, touch point, touch point, touch point, touch point. You can actually automate this entire process. And then if, of course, if they put in their details, you're going to email them day one, day three, day seven, and all of them will go to your money page where they buy. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on every single platform that you're on now. Yeah. Um, so all I'm, what I'm trying to get at the bottom one is make sure you follow up. And don't just follow up before they buy. Follow up after they buy. Follow up, find out what was their experience like. Can I get a t review? Can I get a testimonial? What can we improve better? That part is um, the important follow up. And... 15 minutes. Let me go through some of this stuff. Uh, I've already talked about that. Sales. 
Yep. What about B to B? Okay. Good. Great question. B to B, almost exactly the same. Almost exactly the same. Let's say we're on LinkedIn. This is I will give you my LinkedIn process right now. I have a I use something called um, LinkedIn Helper. LinkedIn Helper, and what it does, it automatically connects me with people in my target market. So it connects, right? It's, it's, it says follow, and it sends a first message, message one, message one. When the person likes me back, it then sends my second, it sends my intro message, which is hi, you know, hi, love to connect with you. Yeah, are you free any time to have a chat? Uh, but it doesn't actually say anything about, I don't offer anything on that first minute. I'm just saying, hi, I want to connect with change agents and I want to connect with people who are doing great things in business. You look like a business leader. Does LinkedIn help an automated system? Yes. Yes. Uh, it sends out that first hi only when they follow up, when they follow me back. And then three days later, my first message will go, hey, I've got a free resource. I've just written this resource here, go and that's one. I've given my free resource. Where do you think I, where do you think I take them? To, to my landing page, which is probably on my website. Take them to my landing page, which then, uh, which I then put in their email address and guess what, after that, it's game over. They get a whole bunch of emails and they finally get a scheduler that then they can schedule an appointment and talk to me. So by the time they talk to me, they know who I am, my business, they have testimonials, they know exactly how I can help their, their business. And all I'm doing is just finding out a little bit about their business and seeing if we can work together. Where have I done work? In the prep. In the prep. I, I did that prep maybe a year and a half ago. Um, I don't have to connect with them. I, this part, I might say a few highs here because I've already made that stuff there but once I've gone into here there's no more prep and I'm just waking up and seeing schedules. There was like three schedules last week and I said I've never talked to this person before who are they? Usually I kind of have some idea who's coming in and they go oh I just came through your LinkedIn don't you remember me? I'm like yes totally remember you. <laughs> did you come through did you get my ebook? Oh yeah yeah awesome <coughs> what did you think? Awesome so it, that, that's what happens in LinkedIn. That's on my website. I take everyone to, back to my website because I want to do two things. I want to cookie them and pixel them because then I can create Facebook ads which will remind them. Well, so it doesn't matter where they are. Your job is to be there before they know they need you and then by the time they need you, they already have you and then you have them and vice versa. Okay. I'm going to finish up on some stuff. The best way to make, oh, I, I should probably stop looking at it myself and give you the stuff. Best way to make a sale is to stop chasing it. It is to provide value upon value, and I'm going to actually write in, in advance instead. The best way to make a sale is to provide value upon value. Your job in your business is to go, how can I provide a crap load of value in advance? How and also, how can I help my potential customer see what it's like to work with me? To see what the whole process is like. So I can kind of baby step them through that process. Because sometimes we have websites, right, that say, step one, we do this, step two, and that's okay. But what if they were educated along the way with videos that said, you know what, this is what we do. This is what a quote looks like. We sit down, we come to your place, I get you a cup of coffee. They just see it behind the scenes. Next one they, they might, next video they might see is, this is what it looks like to work with us. You know, we clean up be beforehand. This is before a video of the place before, a video afterwards. Because um, if a picture is worth a thousand words, one minute of video is worth 1.8 million words. If a picture is worth a thousand words, one minute of video is worth 1.8 million words. So show people, show people what it's like to work with you. 
And uh, most people go, okay, what value can I provide? Really, what, what can I do? I'm going to show you an amazing website that everybody should be using. It's called Ask the Public. Ask the Public, which is not there. Answer the public. Answer the public. Answer the public. And I love this website for two main reasons. One, this really scary guy that just kind of glares at you for a while when this works. You'll see him come up any time now. And so, oh, how do you since it to begin this course? I've already got you. Oh no. I love fast internet. Love oh, it. Best over here in Australia. I know, right? Oh my God. Oh! Yeah. We're searching for something. Looks like a dream I had. What the hell? Okay. We're in the matrix right now. There's a glitch in the matrix right now. Okay, if you go to this website, you see a really cranky old man who just glares at you for a while. It's, it, eventually it's endearing. You see a search bar and you'll type in whatever, you, whatever your main thing is, like you know, kitchen tiles, or you'll type in cell, um, cell roof or um, blinds. And it will literally give you every single question everyone has ever asked about your topic. It will give, and it gives you in a really nice visual diagram all the what questions, what is this all about, what is that, the who questions, who's the best person to do that, the comparison questions, the, um, you know, every stage of the buyer's journey is presented in this wonderful circle. Then what we did was we find the answers. So now we know what the questions are, right? We now go to another website called, and hopefully that works, Quora, Quora.com. Quora.com is an amazing website where people, of, where people ask questions. Once again, they ask questions, but you get answers from all the top people in the field about what it's at. You can answer any question. Some are random and some are really specific about your niche. You will always find an answer because someone's always answering those questions. And so what do we do with that? What do we do? So one of, our, one of the Bob members who I've work, been working with, Stephen, he started a new business called Compost Tea Brewery. Amazing little startup business. He, he was he's very passionate about it, but he actually knew nothing about it at the same time. We went to uh, uh, answer the public. We typed in compost tea. It gave us a hundred different questions about compost tea that we didn't even know were available. We then got a person on Upwork to then do the research about the top 10 questions people had about compost tea on Quora. They went to Quora, found all the answers, rewrote the answers. We created an ebook about it and we give that ebook away to teach people what, what compost tea is all about. Now that ebook has been viewed, has been given away more than 150 times to people um, who wanted that ebook to learn about compost tea. Now in that ebook is little links that if they wanted a pump, they click on the link, it goes, happens to go to this website where it sells the pump. If it has a, a ingredient that they need, it happens to go to this website. And every single day, it just sells little, little bits from that ebook that we, it took us maybe two to three days to create. So even if you know nothing about what kind of value you can bring. You can always go to answer the, uh, answer the public to get the questions people ask, and then you can go to Quora to get the answers, and it's all done for you. And then you can create the answers yourself after that. I don't know where that thing came from. I think somebody told me something. I'm actually not sure what the question was. Um, is there any other questions for me? Uh, how do you find Facebook? sort of does integrate in the sort of business to business, you know, obviously we're sort of selling services to business clients. Yep. Um, is, is Facebook a part of that equation? Facebook for me is always a part of that equation. 
because people do business with people they like, know, and trust. And it's, it, Facebook is just a social platform. Because when people aren't doing business, they're normal people look, checking out what other people are having for breakfast and dinner and stuff like that. Or maybe not. Um, but they're on, they're on Facebook. 95% uh, of social media users have Facebook. They're on it, on average, around 110 hours a month on just on Facebook. Okay? Yes, your, pe your people are on LinkedIn. Yes. So we start there. And then LinkedIn. Then we take them, we might take them to your website where we then pixel them. And then when they're on Facebook, your ad comes up or your video. I see. So once they visit our website and we know that they've got a Facebook account because of that pixel, Five, then we can market them directly yeah. via yeah. Facebook. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, it just automatically does it. It automatically just creates. And it only, these ads only come when this is, gets fired. So there's no like on, off turning, there's no like choose your people for me. Facebook knows this fires, this ad comes up. It's a beautiful, wonderful process. Let me show you a quick process that we did for one of our clients. Looks like this. I'll use compost tea again. He created a video about this um, free week transformation process. So he was growing his veggie garden, one using water, one using basic fertilizer, and the final thing was um, using compost tea. And he showed a, it was a three minute video where he showed the differences. And you could see like there's an amazing difference when he used the compost tea, right? And then from that video, he said, if you want to learn more, get my free ebook. Now the ebook was on a, via chatbot. So it then asked them, what are you, a gardener, uh, a farmer, or government? And a whole bunch of other questions. And what have, what have they got? It was they got an individual ebook for who they were, gardener, farmer, government. They got their own individual ebook. And then from that point on, they would see other videos happening. And then finally, all of them would lead to the sales page where they can buy. That's essentially how it looks like. So if you can draw squares, arrows, and write really badly, but you understand, you can create a funnel. That's, this part here is, believe it or not, where the majority of your focus should be. Understanding this, and then giving it to someone like myself, or in, you know, like um, burning fruit, to actually then create this for you. And so your job is, how can I take myself out of my business, so at the end of it, I'm doing either just only the customer relation, the quoting side, or I'm only doing the loyalty loop side. But all this stuff, this, um, do I need leads? Great, Facebook ad, Google ad. Do I need to market better? Great, I'm gonna give them value in advance. Do I need to do customer, better customer service? Great, we're gonna do an onboarding process. Do I need to educate them? Great, we'll do an online training program. Do I need to do sales? Checkouts. And then at the end, you get it. Okay. I'm going to finish up by finding that website and giving you an idea of what it looks like. I'm just wondering, you maybe use the bot process yep. just to see the chat bot <coughs> process to uh, one of the series of questions that people oh. go through. Oh, yes, that's a great, that's a great thing. Um, do, 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 do. You want to see this process in action, obviously, everybody. I'm just going to give my closing arguments, <laughs> just so you have them. In closing, it's not about where to find your market. It's about letting your audience find you in a smart and delightful ways. 
It's not about finding your audience. It's about being there when they need you. You're going to use video in general to create brand awareness and to develop interest and, and consideration. You're going to use content to delight your audience, which drives the research, discovery, and loyalty. And you're going to follow up with your audience every step of the way by making them feel special, unique, and, and with care. And that's another methodology. How many marketing funnels do you need to get amazing results in your business? Give me a number. Guys, everybody else gave the wrong number, but your group, your group got it. You only need one. It's the one you own and the one you work on. You only need one. Everything changed for me when I got one funnel working. I had this amazing, gorgeous little funnel, Facebook ad to a landing page, which then had a survey form. And when I turned that thing on, when I first turned it on, I got leads and sales. And I'm like, we have more leads and sales that we know what to do with. It, it only took that one funnel. Before that funnel, I tried 10 other funnels which didn't work whatsoever. They broke, they weren't converting how they wanted. But when we finally got that one, that, that's what made all the difference. And if you want the slides, and if you want to see this whole process in action, get your phone out. And I just want to test how this works. You can get your phone out now. And I want you to go to www samofpitch.com forward slash Bob. We're going to go... It should work. Samoth Pitch. And now we'll be getting Facebook ads. Hey. You may... The system works. <laughs> samofpitch.com forward slash Bob. Straight to Messenger. Oh, really? Okay. Then what happens? <laughs> okay, then press get started. You see, uh, I'll show this to everybody. Okay, you see, you should come to this page right here. Yeah. Then at the bottom, should there be a big blue button that says get started? Click on that. And then what happens after that? Yeah. So then you decide what you want to do after that. So you're going to get my slides. You're going to get value in the next couple of days about you know how how to particularly help you in your business, and um, it won't be because I need to email you the slides. It won't be because I have to contact you over the next couple of days. And if you want to do if, if you want to do business, fantastic. If you don't, you can unsubscribe and say stop at any time. And that's that, that's about asking permission from people to do what you need to do. Let me... Do you get many people uh, turned away because they know it's just a robot and not talking to a real person? I always make sure that the person knows it's a robot. So when we're doing other businesses, like a dentist, it would say, hi, this is... Um, this is, Sandra, this is Sandra from Atwell Smiles. I'm your friendly dentist bot. So I always let people know that they're not talking to a real person. Yeah. They, because what they actually want is they actually don't want you. They actually want the solution to whatever their problem is, wherever they are at. So no, there is, I find it's totally cool. In fact, the open rates for, for chatbots is around 95%. It is stunning. In fact, most of the time it's 100%, right? For my, um, for my emails, my open rate is around 20, 20% for a good email. Most marketers are around 5%. Uh, if a good email, maybe 30%, right? But for chatbots, it's still 95%. We've got another five to 10 years before everyone re thinks of chatbots the same way we think of um, email. But this is, this is like now, this is the golden age of getting onto chatbots right now. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, this is really truly my ending right now. I just want to thank you so, so much for taking the time to put up with me. Um, I know I've put a lot on your brains and I know that it actually probably gives you more questions than answers. But the main thing I want to lead you with is it's not about the latest trick. It's actually not about, you know, 
funnels and things. It's about your customers. It's about the people that care and serving them in the best way possible. The best way you can serve them is for you to do the best work that you know possible to do, to do amazing work and to show them in advance the value that you bring. When you do that, when you educate your market and when you're there for your market, they will choose you over everybody else. Everything, everything else is just semantics and extra thing. But thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.